Aber Vater, your word says it's the truth we know that sets us free. And your word is truth, Lord. So therefore I pray, Lord, that every word that is spoken from my mouth, every word that proceeds from my mouth, Lord, May it be 100% in line with your word, Lord. Is there anything that is, Abba, Father, that out of my mouth comes, that is not 100% in line is with your word, I bid you, Abba, Father, that you will stop me with the blood of the blood of the Lamb. Because when we teach your word, Lord, there is no place for man's opinion. There is no place for Gary's opinion, or Gary's interpretation, or doctrine, or theology, Lord. Your word says there is only one truth. And that's your pure word, Lord. So may the word that is spoken today, may it be from this fountain, Lord, of truth. From the throne room of the great I am. Because then it builds the body of Messiah. Then it sets the captives free. We praise you, we glorify you, Lord. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Ons het gesê aan die begin van die reeks vir die doeleindes Daar is mensies uit Zambie, uit Afrika, uit recht oor Europa, recht oor Amerika, wat stream hier die spesifieke reeks en kyk daarna. So therefore, most of it will be done in English, so they can understand as well. We are in our series on the biblical model of the church. The structure of the body of Messiah, or as we know it, the church. We are speaking about the fivefold ministry, um, something that we've all heard about. The fivefold ministry that's been largely neglected in the building of the church. We have learned that all five giftings or offices within the fivefold ministry are equally important, but there's a specific divine order in which Abba Father allows them to function so that the authority can be within the church an authority that the gates of hell will not prevail against, as Jesus or his Hebrew name Yeshua promised. We've started to look at the picture of how this order and um, this fivefold ministry order, how it operates um, within the church of Abba Father. And the first thing that we've learned is that it's not there to exalt titles or positions. If we're in it for that, then we're wasting our time because God's authority will never be on that. Because it was never put in place to exalt man. It was put in place to build, edify, build up the church, the body of Christ, in order for the Christ to advance the kingdom of God in the authority of the king. That is the reason why we see that. And I just want to read Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12 again. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We've learned about the true authority within this fivefold ministry that Matthew 16, 18 speaks about. We've seen the basic characteristics of the fivefold ministry. We've looked at the apostles, which are those who are sent to do certain things, to plant, to build. 
we've seen that the prophets are those who reveal, um, the evangelists are those who bring the good news, who gather, the pastors are those who shepherd, nurture, and comfort, and the teachers are those who instruct, guide, and equip. These are the basic functions within the fivefold ministry, and the last time we were together, we had a look at the apostolic gifting within the fivefold ministry. And as an example, we took the church that a guy by the name of Barnabas built in Acts, the 11th chapter. He built the church of Antioch, and we had a look at how the fivefold ministry works together. We said to each other, if you study the word of Abba Father, you see that um, he did not use pastors to plant churches. He used the apostolic gifting, the apostles to plant the church and the pastors to shepherd them. So that's how this divine order of the structure of Abba Father's church works together. We've seen that the apostolic gifting are those who break barriers Um, for the kingdom of God. Those who who press into the unknown to claim for the kingdom of God. Those who pioneer, because apostle means uh, one saint. We've seen that they are the boulders, those who lay the foundation of the church, who break down the walls of division, things like um, denomination, racism, and um, cultures. They break it down so the body of Messiah can be built as God taught us for the church to be built. They are there um, to affirm other believers in the spiritual gifts as they recognize the gifts in people. They affirm these gifts and then they send the people to do um, whatever they are called to do. The apostolic gifting is there to establish um, the divine order of Abba Father within the church. They affirm and they send. That's why many with the apostolic gifting don't make out the greatest caring pastors because they don't, they're not called to shepherd. They are called to affirm and send, affirm and send to build. And you would hear someone with an apostolic gifting um, say, but just go, just do it. Whatever, you know what the purpose, God has a purpose for you. Ask him what the purpose is and um, take it up and go. It's like, okay, I actually wanted some nurturing or caring or healing. But anyway, so that's what happens if we operate without the divine order of Abba Father in the church. Because as we've said, each one of these five giftings are equally important but they are laid in a divine order. We've seen that because um, uh, the apostolic gifting lays down the divine order of the church, the spirit of religion always opposes the apostolic. Because what is the spirit of religion? The spirit of religion is to build the church on man-made rules, man-made traditions, man-made denominations. This is how we do it in this church. It's my church with my sheep. Pastors can never answer me if I ask them for the scripture that says that the sheep are theirs and not God's. They never seem to find the answer because this is not my church. It's Abba Father's church. Where we as leadership try to walk in front, guide as best we can to build up, edify, um, and send out the body of Messiah to advance the kingdom of God wherever we go. The assignment of the spirit of religion is to oppose the model that Abba Father has for the church or the body of Christ. 
And therefore, there's this constant conflict that you can read about that happened in Antioch as well. So it was definitely not plain sailing for Barnabas and, and Paul. So in Acts 11, we read of how the fivefold ministry got together. Acts 11 says that as they were teaching, because they laid the foundation, Barnabas laid um, the foundation of the church as the apostolic gifting was recognized. Then he, he called in a teacher like Paul, and they started teaching, and he received the teaching gifting as well, Barnabas, because they both taught. The Word of God says they taught for a year, and then the Word of God says, and the prophets came from all over and joined them. And today we're going to have a look at the prophetic gifting within the fivefold ministry. What the difference is between the gift of prophecy and the office of prophecy? What's the difference between 1 Corinthians 12 that speaks about the gift to prophesy and the office of prophecy or the gifting of prophecy, which is included in Ephesians 4 in the fivefold ministry? Because there's a difference. And today we're going to have a look because we know as a foundation the prophetic or the Prophetic gifting are those who reveal. In other words, um, that picture of revealing God's will, revealing the vision that God has for the church, um, is included in this prophetic. We've learned in this series that um, it's not attached to a person. We've seen that God used Barnabas, for instance, gave him the apostolic gifting, which was recognized, and then he gave him the teacher gifting to teach the people. So it's a gifting from the heart of God that can be given to whoever he wants. So the foundation of the prophetic is revelation. To guide the church, to direct the church in the vision that God has for the church. As they receive the revelation from the King of Kings. And you can read Amos 3 verse 7 to confirm this from the word of Abba Father. So the idea is when we understand how the fivefold works together at the end of our series, and God laid it on my heart to share the vision for CFWC, specifically. But we've got to understand how the fivefold ministry operates in authority first. So prophet in Hebrew is the word navi, which means a, a spokesperson, somebody who speaks, somebody who declares, somebody who speaks forth. In Ephesians 3 verse 4 to 5, prophets and apostles are called the stewards of the mysteries of God. In other words, that's, it's that revelation um, that is given to keep the church in the right direction, to keep with the vision that God has. Because remember what the spirit of religion does. It wants the church to get stuck in a rut, to get into um, these rituals of um, singing three fast songs and three slow songs and this is how we do and then we take up the offering and then we have a bit of word and then we pray and then we go home. Because there's something dynamic and alive in the body of Messiah that Abba Father wants. And if we get stuck in this rut, then we miss the growth and the maturity that Abba Father has for, his, for the body of Christ. The prophetic gifting, similar to the apostolic gifting, deals with the spiritual order and patterns and structure and direction of the church. So as the apostolic lays the foundation, the prophetic reveals the vision and keeps the direction. So therefore, prophets many times warn. But we're going to see that, um, and that's, dangerous because if I want the spirit of religion to operate and to take the church to a different place that God has 
then I need to interfere with the prophetic because then I can change the direction. So says the Lord. And then it was never the Lord. Because you look at the church, you see um, nowadays every second person wants to be a prophet. Everybody wants to prophesy. And that's fine because the word of God says the gift is available to everybody. But we've got to make very sure because that's where the enemy infiltrated um, the fivefold ministry, the structure of the body of Messiah to misdirect the church. Because if I can get you to go right, if God says left, because this says the Lord, and you go right, then I can get you stuck in a place that is not part of the vision that God has for that church or for the body of Messiah as a whole. The prophetic gifting within the fivefold ministry is a calling as a spiritual overseer of the church, nations, and territories. Because I need to have almost like a bird's eye view in order to press into the presence of God, get the revelation from God and keep the church in the direction that God says it needs to go. The prophetic function within the fivefold ministry releases hope, purpose, life through the speaking of the word of Abba Father, warnings and guidance. It's part of the prophetic office, the prophetic gifting that Abba Father releases in the church. It's almost as if the prophetic gifting points the way, directs the course, and offers a biblical instruction and provides spiritual insight. It teaches the church to hear the voice of Yahweh and align the church with the word of God. Their hearts cry, the heart cry of those who have the real prophetic gifting is for the people to receive the revelation of the mind of Christ. An example would be where the pastor may take the needs of the people to God in prayer. The prophet takes the word of the Lord to the people. Can you see how in, 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 in sync they need to operate? Because both are essential. Many times the prophetic gifting is used um, and prophets are used as instruments to ignite and release a rhema word into the church, into the body of Christ. Now we have to realize that if we look at the Greek, then there are two words that are generally translated as word. And first, it's the word logos, if you read the word. And the second one is the word rhema. So what is the difference between it? Because if I read the English or when I read the Afrikaans, they both translate it as word of word. But there's a reason that there are two words. And the prophetic gifting are those anointed by the king to speak that rhema word. And we'll look at the difference just now. Because if you look at the word logos in Greek, it means the utter living voice or word. The uttered living voice. In other words, it's the living word of God. So if you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's the living word of God. And this word is logos. Rhema is when the Holy Spirit quickens a specific word to a specific person for a specific situation. 
It's the word used in Romans 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's almost as if where Logos is the living word of God, Rhema zooms into that specific scripture that God wants to give you today. An example would be that we can understand because I always ask God for pictures and he says to me, Logos is like a well of water and Rhema is like drinking a cup of water from that well. So can you see the picture? Have you ever read your Bible and then all of a sudden a specific verse or word just jumps out at you? Because it's for that time and that situation in your life and the circumstances that surround you at that time. That's when the living word, Logos, is quickened by Holy Spirit and it becomes rhema in your life. Because you take that word and you warfare your situation with it. And many times the prophetic gifting is used to speak that rhema word. That moment that you receive the revelation of what you've just read, you can read 20 verses, but you you get stuck on that one. That one keeps jumping out at you because God's trying to tell you something. That's when Holy Spirit quickens a part, a scripture from the living word of God, and he breathes that into you for a specific time. Prophets flow in releasing this revelation from the heart of God. That's what the prophetic gifting is. Listen to what the word of God says. Revelation 2 verse 29. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You see that picture? All of a sudden it starts making sense. It brings the mind of Christ to people in line with the word of Abba Father. Because Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the living word. John 1 verse 1 and verse 14. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And verse 14, and the word became man and dwelt, tabernacled amongst us. You see that picture? A prophetic word can never be a prophetic word if it's not 100% in line with the word of God. And at the end, we're going to look at how to identify a false prophet. But that's one of the first things. But for me to identify a false prophet, I need to know the word. Because if I don't know the word, then I will eat everything that everybody gives to me. Because the word of God gives me the discernment. Um, If somebody gives me a word to say, but that's not in line with God's word. So we've got to define the prophetic gifting in the right way. Listen to what Revelation 19 verse 10 says. It teaches us that the spirit of prophecy, listen, the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ. So if my prophetic word that I give does not testify about Jesus Christ, the living word, then it's a false prophecy. Because that's what the word of God says. If I start speaking about the Sophia wisdom, which is not in the word of God, then it's a false prophecy being spoken. And you hear this from pulpits on a daily basis. 
It can never be a prophetic revelation, a prophetic word that explodes, can never be outside. It cannot even be equal to the word of God. It's got to be submitted to the word of God. It's got to be covered by the word of Abba Father. You've got to be able to confirm a prophetic word in line with the word of God. Because a prophetic word displays the prophetic significance of Scripture. What does that mean? It means a prophetic word is grounded in the principles included in the Word of God. So if the Word of God teaches that when you do this, um, this will happen. If you do this, this will be the consequence. Then those are the principles that are taken and revealed in a prophetic word and spoken into a current battle or circumstance or situation where you are in. The principles in the word of Abba Father cannot change because I've received a revelation from God. So it's very easy to test the prophetic word if you know the word of God. Because all principles are in the word of God. God's heart, God's character is described and his instructions are included in his word. So if I say to somebody, God shows me that he's going to bless your business. It might just be prosperity teaching. Because that's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says you've got to take your business to Him, repent of everything that might be wrong, and then you will receive the blessing. So you cannot take the Word, God says He's going to bless my business and keep stealing from SARS. It's not going to work. He's not going to bless it. So we've got to get to that place where we understand the Word of God. Because if I do certain things like I don't pay the tax in my business, then it gives the enemy legal ground to attack my business. And he ain't leaving until I stop and repent. And then I will bear the fruit of my hard work and see the blessing and favor on my business. So I cannot continue and just speak this prosperity because even though it's God's heart to bless you, sometimes we just screw it up with our disobedience. And we've got to understand that when we read and study the Word of God. A prophetic word will always match with the patterns and principles included in the word of Abba Father. And in this, we recognize a false prophet like this. There's no other way. There's no other way. Because a false prophet always crosses the borders of the word. They always sometimes they speak, 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 and then boom, outside the borders of the truth of God's word. And that's why we, as the body of Christ, need, we need to be equipped in the truth of God's word. Because that is my sword. That is what I use to warfare. If you read the word of God in Ephesians 6. A prophetic word that is in line with the word of Abba Father releases an authority that is grounded in the word. So many times prophets love to think that they are releasing an authority over a situation or they are releasing something over you. They are releasing nothing. God releases that authority when a word is spoken in obedience to God in line with his word then he releases the authority. Dear prophet, you are just the vessel. I'm not the one who releases anything. A 
let's prove this from the word. Because I asked the Lord, Lord, but just show me a picture, Lord, of how the prophetic word that I speak, Lord, can be in line with your word only. And that you will not deviate from that. And the Lord says to me, read Romans 10 verse 17. So I open my word and I read Romans 10 verse 70 that says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word there, Rhema. Faith, listen very carefully, Prince, Princess of God. Faith comes by hearing, not the voice of the prophet or the preacher or the pastor or the, by hearing the word of God. And then the Lord says to me, okay, now you turn to Romans 12. And you read about the prophetic word that is released. So I read Romans 12 verse 6. Listen to this. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If your gift through grace is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So prophesy in accordance with what you've heard from the word of God. Prophesy in accordance with the word of God. Ni akful. Want as ek voel, is daar moeilijkheid. Guaranteed. Because it's not what the word of God teaches us. The word of Abba Father is the foundation of our faith. And if I prophesy in accordance to my faith, I prophesy in accordance to the word of Abba Father. So what is the difference between the prophetic gift that is given to us in 1 Corinthians 12 and the prophetic office or gifting as part of the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4? Because the word of Abba Father says in 1 Corinthians 12, 29, it says not all are prophets. But then in 1 Corinthians 14, 31, it says, um, but all may prophesy. So it says, not all are prophets, but in 1 Corinthians 14 it says, but all may prophesy. We've got to understand that if you read 1 Corinthians 12 about the gifts of Holy Spirit, you see the gift of prophecy is a gift that is given, and the Hebrew says it so beautifully because it says the dancing hand of Holy Spirit will give the gift as he deems necessary to minister unto the bride. So you might be paying in a shop and then the Holy Spirit gives you a word, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge to be spoken to that person and behind the talk. And it might be that prophetic gift that's released because Abba Father wants to use you as a vessel to get a message to that prince or princess of the Most High God. The Word of God says um, in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3, it says a prophetic word as is gifting is for exhortation, which means to stir up, edification, which means to build up, Comfort, which means to strengthen, and conviction, which means to correct. Prophetic office, as included in the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4, is a calling from Abba Father. It's when I operate in the governing function of the body of Messiah. Because it largely speaks to the church, the vision of the church as a whole. So obviously, 
one in the office of prophet will have the gift of prophecy. But not always the other way around. Because the office of prophecy gives an insight into where the church is heading. It moves the body of Christ to a place of spiritual maturity, which means Christ-likeness. That is spiritual maturity. Not, if I know all the verses from Genesis to Revelation, I'm not necessarily spiritually mature. Because some of the most immature spiritual people I know are professors. I have a lot of knowledge. But the Christ-likeness has disappeared. Which makes you immature in the spirit even though you have knowledge. And that's why Paul says, knowledge puffs up, but love unites. That's why he says that. The office of prophecy is to direct and strengthen the ministry and those who rise in ministry. It equips people to hear from God themselves, which is the purpose of the fivefold ministry, to build up the body of Christ. So it equips the people to hear from Abba Father themselves. It's not only about them. Second way to recognize a false prophet. And we're getting there. The office of prophecy is to bring the body of Messiah into unity. One vision for the church and to advance it for the kingdom of God. If I can explain, because obviously I asked the Lord, Lord, just give me a picture in the natural, Lord. Because just to to make sure I understand this. And the Lord says to me, in the natural you can say, All may cook, but all are not chefs. One is like a skill in the natural, and one is a career. That's how we need to understand. So a chef obviously cooks, but a cook isn't always a chef. Because there's a calling from God to bring the vision of where the church is heading, the church as a whole, to equip the body of Messiah, to hear from the Lord, in the prophetic office of the fivefold ministry. A prophetic word includes revelation, because it's from the heart of the great I am. So it includes revelation. It includes interpretation. In other words, when our Father gives me a word, He's going to interpret, He's going to give me the meaning of what it means for me. And then there's application. How to use this word, to warfare with this word in my current situation. What our Father wants to tell me in my current situation. An example of this, and many times we forget this part. Many times when we receive a prophetic word, there are conditions or certain principles in the word of God that we need to adhere to. An example would be many times um, I need to repent in order for God promise to be realized and to be released in my life. An example is, um, God spoke a word over King David and he said, if your sons obey my commandments, the house of David will reign over Israel. It's not just the word that your house is going to reign over Israel. It's not what God says. He says, if your sons Obey my commandments, then your house will rule over Israel. 
So many times that is included because the principles of God's word will never be let out or taken out from a prophetic word. Because his principles of sowing and reaping and all the others are woven into a prophetic word that is released. God's going to restore this in your life. Praise the Lord. Just check the principle that says, if you stop with whatever you're doing, he's going to restore you. And sometimes when we take the principles of God out from a prophetic word, we sometimes stuck with prosperity religion. Because everything's going to be great. And if I read Jeremiah 23 that says, don't tell people that are disobedient to me. Don't tell them that everything's going to be okay because it's not going to be okay. Because they will be reaping what they sowed. So I need repentance from them. So you don't do my kingdom any good by telling them that you're in God's favor and God's going to bless you because you see their conduct is outside my word. You are lying to my sheep. Read Jeremiah 23 and see this. And we'll see why a false prophet does that. Because it's all for a very specific reason. You ain't going to pay me if I tell you to repent and stop your nonsense. Just need to proclaim the blessing part. Then I can collect. And there's a huge disruption and disgrace in the church of Abba Father because of this. In this word that was given to David, there was a condition of obedience that activated the prophetic word from the heart of the Father. We've got to see this, Prince, Princess of the Most High God. Then the word of God says, in many places, one of them, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21, Prove all things and hold fast which is good. So test the prophetic word. Test the word that you receive. And that's why the word teaches us to warfare over our prophetic word. Because part of that warfare is, Lord, if it's not from you, take it away, Lord. Take it away, Abba Father. If it's not of you. We've got to remember that we don't just follow a prophetic word if it's not being tested and if it doesn't witness with Holy Spirit inside you. Because Holy Spirit inside you will confirm it to the word of Abba Father. The word of God is like this plumb line to which a prophetic word is measured. Always. Without any exception. Listen, Prince, Princess of God, without any exception. Because the moment I deviate from God's word, I get into trouble and I'm busy with false prophecy. Even though I speak the most, the loveliest of all blessings over somebody. It's not helping. It's not correcting. It's not edifying. It's not building them. Jeremiah 23. Go and read that. If you measure a prophetic word to the word of God and there are any contradictions, throw it out. It's false. We've got to be careful to utter the words 
Thus saith the Lord. We've got to be so careful about this. And that's something that terrifies me because many times when God gives me a prophetic word, I confirm it over and over and over again inside myself. Because I'm terrified of speaking on his behalf and then giving Harry's opinion. Because you can misguide a congregation, you can misguide the sheep of the shepherd Elroy. And Elrah. You can confuse them by saying, Thus says the Lord. You will do this, 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 this. Because then I'm abusing the authority of God for my own selfish gain. And God hates that. So I'm very weary to use the words, thus says the Lord, unless I've heard him so vividly speak into my heart. Because I know that we're treading on very dangerous ground by just simply saying these words. Because those words carry tremendous weight. And if I want to be a vessel in the hands of the great I am of Abba Father, then I've got to be submitted in humbleness to him all the time. Make sure that it's his pure word that flows through. I always use the example, and it's probably not the most elegant example, but I say to the people, releasing this prophetic word is like almost being this vessel like a house pipe. Because you're watering the plants, you can never take the credit for the water because it all comes from the source. The moment the source is cut off, the hose pipe will lay in the sun and it will perish and the plants will die. There will be no water. You can never take the credit. Look at me. I'm watering the plants. No, no, no. If I close the tap, you die. You've got to understand this picture. And if I'm in that place when Abba Father anoints me with a prophetic gift or he calls me to the prophetic office or the gifting within the fivefold ministry. I cannot enter or even ascend a stage if I haven't died in my pride. Because I'm going to hurt people. And I'm going to mislead people. Many times for selfish gain. And many times I lead them astray because of a lack of knowledge. You've got to be very careful. If we look at the current world that we live in, we know that false prophets are rampant all over the place. People are giving prophetic words and prophetic visions left, right, and center. I've heard the other day that the newest trend is to Google information about a certain, say, town, and then they phone the government of that town. And they say, the word Lord has shown me and then they just ramble off everything that they read on Google. Yeah, 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 that's what's happening. Just to get a foot in there, just for their own gain. How arrogant do we want to become? If the king of kings does not reveal a word to you, keep quiet, prince, princess of God. Don't utter the words. Rather pray for that person or pray about it until you are sure. We've got to pray for discernment from Abba Father to identify the false prophets. 
We have to be very aware and diligent. So how do I recognize a false prophet? Many times, um, the first thing we think about is, if a word that is spoken doesn't come true, then the prophet was false. Mm, not always. Because if I speak something from the heart of God and you continue in your disobedience, you miss that word. And it ain't my fault. It doesn't make the prophet false automatically. It is part of it, but not always. Because my disobedience, if God has spoken a prophetic word over me to say that, Harry, you are going to be a teacher in the body of Christ. You're going to teach my word. And I never leave my Egypt because I continue to remain in the world and I continue to live in my sin. Then I can't say when I'm on my deathbed, oh, I had a false prophecy of I was going to be a teacher. No, no, it, it, it might have been activated if you entered covenant, Harry. Because the moment I enter the will of God, the promise of God, the purpose of God that he has for my life is activated. So it's not always the test, but it is part of the test. It's not the only criteria. We've got to remember that many familiar spirits move around. And they also declare things that were true. Or that sometimes comes to pass. But the source is not the heart of the Father. The source is not Abba Father. And all I need to do when I'm a familiar spirit and I want to grab you, it's just, I see your granddad in an orange overall. Oh yes, he was in prison. The familiar spirits were also there. They know he was in prison. And familiar spirits do that just to grab your attention. And the moment they have your attention, they speak this death and binding word into your life. We've got to be very careful. Because the fact that somebody says to you, I see you walking with a blanket. Oh, I loved my blankie when I was a babe. It's just a way of getting you to that place to bind you in the chains from the enemy. That's not necessarily a word from our Father. We've got to pray about it. We've got to warfare about it. We cannot simply accept it. Because if I'm filled with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will witness to that word that I received. That's what the word of God teaches us. Let us look at what the word of God says about false prophets. When a false prophet moves in let's say, for the lack of another word, their ministry. They will always point you back to them and not to Jesus Christ. You will hear things like, align yourself with a prophet. Well, I thought the word says, align yourself with the word of God. Align yourself with Abba Father in covenant. The moment people start speaking about the importance of a prophet in your life, be very careful. Because there's a very good chance that that will be a false prophet. Because the Word of God teaches that false prophets always redirect the attention back to them because they've got their own agenda. They've got that self-righteous, self-exaltation inside them. Because they've got to be the center of attention. They've got to be, oh, that guy, that woman when she speaks, oh. And the moment they direct you to them all the time, the word of God says, it's a false prophet.
they will always tell you about the importance of them in your life. A true prophet will direct you to the great I am and teach you to hear his voice yourself. Or identify a gift, affirm you in that gift, and then speak words that build you up in that gift for you to do whatever Father calls you to do. It's dangerous, Mr. Prophet or Mrs. Prophet, to stand on a platform if you haven't been dismantled of your pride. It's very dangerous. A false prophet, according to the word of God, refuses to take accountability or counsel from senior pastors or senior leaders in the congregation. You will see them always appoint people inferior that cannot really rectify or tell them anything because they know it all. Because they hear directly from God. Don't they? I hear from God. They refuse to take accountability, which is a biblical concept of leadership. Many times the word of God teaches that a false prophet is judgmental and critical. The moment you dare to ask a question, they get critical and judgmental and sometimes very angry. Because how dare you question them? The word of God says I can taste the word. God says I can taste them. So, don't tell me that I can't taste it. Don't tell me that I can't taste it by saying, where in the word is that a line? You're speaking about this in a prophetic word that you want to release over the church. Where are those principles in the word of God? Because according to my word of God that I read, there are some contradictions that you just mentioned. And the moment you even want to attempt a discussion, there will be havoc. You will know it's a false prophet. According to the word of God, false prophet preach a prosperity message. 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, they love money. They love money. Things like the presence or anointing of God without money is simply annoying. On Facebook pages of so-called prophets, they love money. And through this, and this is a warning according to the word of God, through this they are inviting the same judgment that came on Ananias and Sapphira over them. Acts 5. It brings strange fire into the body of Messiah. And our Father will not tolerate it. Because the hourglass is running out. And Abba Father's calling us as a bride to say, but it's time that you stop with everything and look at my word. And allow me to direct you to that place because I'm looking for a bride. Listen. Without spot or blemish. You look at the Hebrew word for maturity, spiritual maturity. It's sometimes translated in some translations as perfect. Maturity, it's the Hebrew word tamim, which means to be of integrity, to be in the truth. But it also means, listen, without spot. So he's coming for a bride that is Christ-like. 
but you are. And I really experience this fire burning inside me. Every day it burns more and more and more. And this warning that the time is running out. Tell the people that you meet, Harry, tell wherever you go, tell my bride to align themselves with my word. Because when the shofar sounds, those who are in covenant with the groom mature Christ like. Yeah, but I only came I only came to Christ two weeks ago. I don't know what the other person knows that has been walking with Christ for twenty years. Listen, Prince, Princess of God, um, if we look at it in the natural again, nobody expects a four-year-old to have the character of an 18-year-old. But if an 18-year-old has a character of a 10-year-old, he's immature. But you grow in maturity. So it doesn't matter if I'm in covenant, if I've surrendered everything I am to the great I am. A day before I die, I will be with him forever. But if I did it 20 years ago, he wants me to grow. He wants me to grow in the spirit. He wants me to mature. He wants me to walk that road of sanctification. Afrikaans bad van heilig maken. Where we grow to be more Christ-like every day. And he's the potter, I'm the clay, and through his word he forms me, he teaches me, he guides me, he warns me, he reprimands me, he, he calls me to accountability. But it's okay. Because I'm in covenant with the king. A true prophet, prince, princess of God, cannot be bought. An example it's the prophet Elijah. Go read his life. How many times he was offered money. Just I'm not taking anything to change the word. I'm going to hear from the king and speak it as it is. A false prophet according to the word of God as I said earlier, there's always, there are always places where they, where they cross the border of the word of God. There's always a place where they speak outside the revelation in the word of God. And then they teach you that their word is on par with the word of God. No, 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 but God released me. So whatever I say is equal to his word. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the verses that thou shalt not add or take away anything from my word. What I'm saying to people, if I say that is, God's word's not totally complete. But don't fear, I'm here to complete it. Once again, how arrogant do we want to be? A true prophet clings to the Bible. A true prophet, prince, princess of God, clings to the Bible. A true prophet will not leave the word of Abba Father, even though the world that we live in entertains the compromises. Because it's not that difficult. You just move outside the word and, and people will believe it. Because my people perish due to a lack of knowledge. How are you going to call me out as a false prophet if you don't know the word? It's important to understand. Currently, we are in a time where the church, the body of Christ, is being challenged to awaken from their sleep. I 
Abba Father is challenging us to awake from our sleep. The roots of binding religious traditions are being pulled out. Because the church has been sitting in its comfort zone for too long. And Abba Father is uprooting these religious traditions. Listen, the calling of a true prophet. Jeremiah 1 verse 9. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth. And said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy, overthrow, to build and to plant. The office of prophet. The office of prophet. Because the gifting of a prophet is to direct the church. It goes without saying that it's got to uproot the obstacles in the way. And that's why our Father gives the prophet discernment to expose the works of the enemy so that the church can move in the right direction. And have our fathers uprooting the spirit of religion that has misformed, misformed the structure, the divine structure of God's church. You see it on a daily basis, how this is uprooted every day. And we've got to be part of that plan. To say, Lord, I just want to eat from the pureness of your word. Lord, whatever gifting you plan for me, Whatever calling you have on my life, Lord, um, live it, Lord. And a father, uproot and destroy things in my life that keep me away from you. Uproot and destroy it, Lord. If I'm not prepared to say that, what am I afraid of? Abba Father, although the world is busy with a one world religion, part of prophecy of the end time, there's a remnant, the pride, that Abba Father's gathering and he's calling them to that purity, that maturity without spot or blemish as he's preparing to sound the shofar for the groom to fetch his bride. Let us make sure that we are ready, Prince, Princess of the Most High God. Let's close our eyes and pray together.
people get ready. People get ready, surely. He is not a man that he would lie. He said he would come again, and he will come again. Some said a carpenter, some said a teacher, they said a prophet, they said he's a fraud, he's a god, but he's fully a man, and he was born to be a king. And though he was silent, like a lamb to the slaughter, he was silent. In his patience, he endured. But I know the end of the story, and we're only at the beginning. He's alive. Look upon the one you've pierced. Look upon the one we've pierced. Who is this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? Abba Father, thank you. Thank you, Abba Father, that you're teaching us, Lord, about your fivefold ministry, Lord, that perfect divine structure of the body of Christ, Lord. Thank you, Daddy, for the gifting of prophecy. Thank you for the office of prophecy in a fivefold that you release amongst your bride, Lord. And Lord, even though we know like all other giftings in the fivefold ministry, we cannot build the church on prophets alone because it will cause people to run to the church merely for the next prophetic word and not run after you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can realize that the prophetic gifting, Lord, is an essential part of the guidance of, church, of the church, Lord. Because it's a revelation of your word, Lord. Like the prophet Amos wrote, Lord, that you reveal to your prophets. To guide, to build up the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. For the fivefold ministry. Thank you, Lord, that we see the picture, Lord. Even when David went to face Goliath, he took his staff in his hand, a symbol of authority in your word, and he picked up five stones. That picture of authority, that fivefold ministry that we need the authority to obtain victory over the enemy as a church. Thank you for the grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the grace of the fivefold ministry. Help us, Lord, to move towards that. Help us, Lord, to move in obedience. Help us, Lord, to uproot, destroy everything, Lord, that is not of you in our lives. Equip us, Lord. Make us hungry for your word, Lord, so that we can be equipped, Lord, with the knowledge to identify the wolves in sheep clothing, Lord. Give us the discernment through our Holy Spirit to walk in obedience to you under your direction. And in your way. I 
want to invite you to react to the King of Kings. If you want to say to the Lord today, Lord, this is my if I've left the road, this Lord, due to any falseness, Lord, any false work, Lord, today I want to uproot this in my life, Lord, and I want you, Lord, to put me on this road, Lord, where you and you alone guide me. I want you to rise with me and stand with me as we pray. I have to believe it. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't want to follow my own ways. I'm done chasing feelings. Like a burden, just want you to spend this time with the king. You took me further, further than I was asking, and simply to see you, it's worth it. Father, thank you. Thank you, Abba Father, that we declare today, Lord, and we want to cry out, Lord, we will let Holy Spirit lead us, Lord. Abba Father, thank you that you release the giftings, Lord, as you see fit. I pray, Lord, I just experience to pray for all doubt to go, 
I experience how many people sitting here today thinking that you are unusable in the kingdom of God or that you're inferior in the kingdom of God. And I just experience the Lord laying it on my heart to say to you today, I don't create worthless vessels. Abba Father, I pray that you will release the fullness of the oil, Lord, and fill each and every one of our vessels, Lord. Come fill us with Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you and we praise you, Lord. Receive the blessing. The living God, Spirit of the living God. We only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God. We want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Come and speak to us, O oh Lord. Spirit of the living God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may He lift up His countenance amongst you and give you peace. May you walk in the peace of the great I am wherever you go. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Son of God, I pray this. Amen.